Welcome aboard the Axopar 28 cabin. This is the original Axopar and the most awarded in the fleet. My name is Joe Fox and today we're going to take a look on board this brand new model here in Sydney. This model has become loved due to its versatility in the range. It sits in a really nice sweet spot that caters for a really wide range of uses. It's a very functional boat, it's a very configurable boat, and there are a number of different options on board to design it to your preference. So, for example, up the bow here, we've got three options available. So we've got an L-shaped seating, uh, as you see here. You can have a dining table here and then the dining table also drops down to create a, a v-shaped sun lounger or a day bed in australia this entire setup so you get all three options as standard so it's a very configurable area of the bow on the front of the vessel we have an electric anchor option as well with a an anchor locker this area you can shade it so there is a shade cloth which mounts onto the front edge of the cabin and goes out just above my head on two poles so creating a very protected area uh, from the sun. Sunshade on this boat is excellent. You've obviously got the cabin just behind me which we'll go through, um, but the sunshade on the back is complemented as well with a sunshade on the stern of the boat, so you can cover the entirety of the boat, which is very important in this part of the world. Plenty of storage under the lockers here. You're not left wanting for storage on this model at all. Just behind me here, the access to the toilet is very simple. You wouldn't know it was here, but looking into it, it is quite large blends in perfectly with the lines of the boat. It doesn't take away from anything on the boat. They haven't compromised on the cabin space or the deck space to um, allow the, uh, the location of this toilet down here. But when I'm in, it's very comfortable. I've got a, a sink here, freshwater sink. There is a window in the door. There is a vent in the roof, some good storage area here, and a freshwater electric flush option available for those that want it. So a very nice little feature, a mirror in the back and some lighting. So it's really nicely fitted out in here. As we move off, turning our attention to the cabin top, you'll notice the moulding of this has been turned upside down, much like the Axopar 37s. So this is part of one of the facelifts. So the Axopar 28 is in its second series now, second generation, and we recently, in 2021, had a, a facelift. So the cabin top has changed shape, the stern platforms have changed, um, just to improve the lines of the boat and also to make it more functional. So we've got a lovely handrail, which you don't see because it's not made of stainless steel, it's not bolted on but it also doubles up as a gutter. So it's a gutter slash handrail all the way around the cabin top. On the top of the cabin, we have the option for roof racks, be it surfboards or paddle boards. I feel very secure down the side of the boat here. I've got that classic Axopar rail down the side at good height, halfway up my thigh, excellent for kids. We'll work our way around the outside of the boat and then we'll head into the cabin and have a look inside. On the back of the cabin top, we have an option for rod holders. Now this gives you six rod holders, stainless steel, as you see here. It also gives you an additional two rod holders on either side of the vessel, so that's eight rod holders in total. Perfect for those of you wanting to fish on the boat. If you are wanting to fish or open up the deck space a bit more here at the back, there are four options available. You can have the classic aft cabin. The most popular version here in Australia is the cabin with the aft cabin. This gives you a sun lounger on the top. There's a large access hatch here underneath and a double berth below. Other options include just a bench seat across the back of the cabin, opening up this deck space with storage underneath. You can also opt for a wet bar, which gives you a fridge and some storage and the option to install cooking facilities if you want out here on the back of the boat. Lastly, the fourth option is a completely open aft deck. If you are fishing or if you're installing the rod holders, you might put fishing rod holders on here. A working deck at the back is, uh, is really probably what you're looking for. Either side of the aft area, there is fantastic fender storage lockers. So fenders and lines, one of these can be optioned as an esky or a cool box to keep the drinks cold when you're out on the boat. If you're looking to increase your seating area out the back here, you can also option a removable cushion on this fender locker. So you can seat two on either side in addition to whatever setup you have here in the middle. Optional ski pole on the back also. The standard bathing ladder it's just under the port side platform here. 
Access from the water is very easy. There is also an optional ladder on the starboard side for those wanting something with a bit more to hold on to when getting in and out of the water. One of the 2021 model upgrades was the aft platform. So these platforms go all the way out to the side of the vessel, maximizing space. Looking at previous models, we've probably got an extra 200 millimeters of platform out each side. Aft shower on this side, perfectly positioned near the bathing ladder. So you come out of the water and you rinse off. Before we head inside the cabin, it's important not to forget the engine on the back of the boat. The most important thing of this boat, uh, Axopar have worked extensively over the last eight or nine years alongside Mercury to design a hull that is perfectly complementary to the Mercury outboard and the propellers that Mercury put on the, uh, the engines. Options available are a 250, a 300, and a 350 horsepower outboard. All available in black or white. You can also add twin engines, so that will be twin 200s. The boat can take a maximum of 400 horsepower, uh, so twin 200s um, gives you a little bit more torque and uh, slightly different maneuvering characteristics. Let's head on inside to the cabin and look at what this boat really is designed for and why it's so popular. So the main cabin or the pilot house is accessed on either side by two large opening sliding doors. This creates good easy access. You step down into the cabin and I'm about six foot and I'm standing here. I've got plenty of headroom above me and I can see out very easily through the windscreen. If I sit down, the visibility gets even better because I'm a little bit lower and you can tell it's been designed as a comfortable boat that can be taken for long distance in a driving position. You don't have to stand. There is the bolster, which can be up or down. If I'm driving a bit fast through a bit of, bit of chop or offshore, I might, might stand like this, but um, for the longer passages, sitting down is definitely the way to go. It feels like you're driving a, you know, a, an SUV or a sports car on the water. It's really quite nice. The dash here is one of the updates that Axapa have recently done. They've remolded the dash and the option of a glass helm is now available. So this is two 12 inch plotters behind a glass screen, uh, looking very, very clean, very, very swish. We've got this one set up with our charts on starboard and our engine data, uh, RPM, speed, trim, all the rest of it on port. Trim tabs, very accessible here with a joystick, your bow thruster here, the remote here controls both the bow thruster and the anchor. So this is quite useful. You can drop the anchor from the bow and control the front of the boat when you're lifting or dropping the anchor. This panel here has all our operational controls, navigation lights, window wash, etc., for running the boat. Simrad VHF down here to port. And we've also on this one got a searchlight fitted. So there's a remote, I can turn the searchlight on and I can move it around. And so if I'm coming into a mooring or a dock at night that I don't know, got a bit of a, an adjustable headlight to give me a bit of visibility. So Mercury have recently changed their throttle controls. Um, this is the updated uh, fly-by-wire electronic throttle. It does have a lock on it for safety, so you do have to pinch your button and slide to engage the gear. Uh, you get a green light here when you're in neutral, which is much more visible than the previous um, options, and then all the, you know, the, the trimming and the controls for the throttle are down the side. The engine trim is as it was before on the left-hand side and there's a start stop button as well. So once the ignition is on, you can tap the engine on and off with the touch of a button, which is a nice little feature. The fusion sound system integrated into the Simrad display is also a standard feature, but there are a number of upgrade, upgrades available. You get sound in the cabin as standard, and then you can put sound outside as an upgrade, and then you can add a subwoofer um, on the back of the boat to really get the music cranking. The sunroof in the 28 cabin is the best thing takes the boat and makes it a completely open day boat. You know, on a lovely day, you can open it all up and have it completely clear, or you can close it up completely when the weather turns. So this is where the versatility of the boat comes in. Um, it can be used in all weathers. We were using this boat yesterday in torrential rain, and me and my colleague were sat here in the rain, having a normal conversation, normal volume, at about 35 knots. So it's really just an awesome, awesome setup that we have here in the cabin. You can see the sunroof opens a good, you know, just over a meter. And then we've got good access either the side, so airflow is uh, very good on this. Touch of a button, closes and opens the sunroof. Underneath the helm and the co-pilot seat, the excellent, excellent location for the fridge, the sink and the fridge. This is a really good size fridge. 
powered by the battery, so it does stay nice and cool. We've also got a fresh water sink here for washing glasses, washing hands, all the rest of it. On the back edge of the seat pedestal here, we have a bracket for a table. So these two seats do turn around and there is a teak table which goes between the bench seat at the back and the seats here, providing a really nice internal dining area. Turning our attention to the stern of the cabin, we have a three person bench seat across the back. So you've got five people inside the cabin, comfortably seating at speed, fully protected. This whole area can become a second berth. So you've got the double berth at the back and then these two seats slide forward and down and these two turn around to create an internal bed. Access into the aft cabin is through the seat on the port side. Seat folds up and then you've got very clear access down here. The aft cabin is very spacious. So down here you can sleep uh, two people side by side. Uh, it's very well ventilated. There are nice windows, there's Venetian blinds, there's hidden strip lighting, there's USB charging points. A lot of people just use this as storage down here. So it's great to get all of the gear on board out of the way so you're not tripping over it on the deck. The battery switches are located down here, but there is an option to have these as a remote just under the helm seat for easy access. Ventilation above my head. There is a one large hatch with a fly screen and a blackout blind. And then just forward of that, there's a second smaller hatch also on the same fly screen and blackout blind. So moving around this boat, you can really see the level of detail and the attention that's gone to the design of this. And I think that's backed up in the numerous awards that it's won all over the world. It's still a very popular model. And we have probably more of these in Australia than any other model. Uh, so we really love getting on board and having a look through them. We hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you do have any questions, do get in touch with the team. And if you did like the video, do give us a like and a subscribe to be updated with uh, more Axopar related content. My name is Joe Fox from the team at E-Yachts. We'll see you in the next one.